Hi YouTube and welcome to Gaming Indoors, a channel dedicated to board, video and tabletop games. This is pretty much my first video to camera and today it's about board games. Specifically, it's about solving a problem I have with board games. See, I've loved board games ever since I was a child and thankfully they've changed and, and improved a lot. But the way game publishers describe them hasn't. And I think I need to do something about that. See, those three icons you get on the side of a box, they're almost always inaccurate. And the blurb on the box, although it does a good job of describing the theme, um, escape the highland, expand the kingdom, take over the opponent's pieces, I'm not sure if that alone is suitable or enough to tell me whether I'm going to like that kind of game. Now I know the community has made a whole list of game mechanics, things like card drafting or dice rolling or worker placement, but I worry that that's probably too much information. Also, I'm not sure all of it's relevant. What I want is a decide and glance, a, a look and choose, a, a read and resolve description about a game that tells me if I'm gonna like it or not, without having to resort to look at YouTube videos or, or forum comments. So, in this episode, I'm gonna see how I can better describe a board game without using too many geeky or technical descriptions. I'm going to share my thinking on screen via the magic of PowerPoint and some B-roll film segments. So I'm going to start my list with what's supplied in the box. Those three gaming icons. Age, number of players, duration of play. Let's start with age. Well, first off, what does this actually tell me? Does age tell me how difficult the game is? Or that it has themes that are inappropriate for youngsters? If it's difficulty, I should probably call that out and I think I'll add it to my list. But I think I should also include something about appropriateness. Does it have adult themes? Something like Cards Against Humanity, probably best not played with my six-year-old. I don't have a six-year-old, but if I did, probably wouldn't be appropriate. The other thing about age is it's just so inaccurate. I don't really understand the purpose of Publisher Ray telling me this game's suitable for a eight-year-old when I know that my six-year-old could play it. Again, my kids aren't six, why do I keep saying that? On to number of players. Well, I mean, that seems like it's worth keeping. But what it doesn't tell me is whether the games are to be played as a single player, or whether everyone plays as a team, or whether, in fact, you're all playing together against the game. I think I need to do something about that. So definitely gonna keep um, number of players just need to think about whether it's going to be single player versus teams. Time taken to play. I mean, this is just wildly wrong. So many games I've played where I'm being told it's a 20 minute game, it takes us 40. Likewise, I've played an hour long game in half an hour. I think I need to relate this back to number of players. Does this time taken mean for two players, or does it mean for eight players? If the game's got two to eight, for example, is it referring to two players will take an hour to play this game, or eight players will take to an hour? Or does it not matter? Something else I've just thought of here. I need to go back and add in something around what the optimum number of players is. I think Board Game Geek captures this already as one of their mechanics. I think I need to record that. I think that's a valuable thing to do. Okay, so time taken to play. Need to standardize it, need to relate it to players. Good, done. If I look at the blurb on the back of a box, it usually tells me the theme of the game. And I think it does a good job of that, as I said before. What I want to capture here, just the word theme. Do I want to give it a rating? Well, I'll think about that later. But for now, I think theme is an important thing to capture. In the box, I'm going to have contents, right? Does this help me in any way? Hmm, not really, though I suppose it does give me a, a kind of generic type of game. It tells me if it's a board game or a card game or a dice game, and that's probably important. Again, I'll, I'll write down type, and I'll refer to board, card, or dice for now. Okay, what else have I got? Well, I've got rule books. Now, obviously, each game is gonna have a different set of rules, but one thing they're gonna have in common, or one thing they'll be able to tell me, is what does winning rely on? Is this a game that's based around skill of some kind or strategy of some kind, or is it based around luck or does it have a mix of the two? I think I need to write down skill and I need to write down luck. 
Suddenly this feels like a, a choose your own adventure game. Sorry, digression. Is this a skill or luck based game? And I think I'm probably gonna come back and give these values. Okay, so that's my rules. Skill, luck, done. I'm still missing something. And I think that something is about the kind of confrontation or aggression this game has. I played a lot of games where the kinds of people I play with totally dictate the kind of board game I'm gonna play with them. Some of my friends, for example, don't like that kind of direct confrontation where I'm gonna take your piece or I'm gonna invade your space. I've got other friends who don't mind that at all. And I think that's probably something I wanna to use to describe my board games. Direct confrontation, I'm specifically targeting one person. Indirect confrontation, therefore, means that I'm doing something to hinder the group, or I'm not specifically attacking one person, but I'm doing something here that's gonna mess everyone else up, or one person in that turn, but I'm not picking on that person specifically. Yeah, I think that works. Direct confrontation, indirect confrontation. Okay, it's time to turn to game mechanics. Now, here's my problem with game mechanics. The thing is, there doesn't seem to be a definitive list. I've done a bit of research, I've done a lot of research on the web and I've gone through YouTube views and I've seen people's top 10 mechanics, but they don't all seem to be using the same words, the same vocab at all. I think the best shot I've got at this is Board Game Geek's own list. The problem I have here is that they have 173 of them. I feel 173 is just way, way too long. I need to take a copy of this, write everything down and go through it and determine what I need out of it. I've spent a lot of time on this and I've reduced it right down to what I think is the right list. And it's a list of 25. Although it wasn't sensible to go through 173 of the original, I do think it's probably worthwhile just skipping through very quickly the 25 I've chosen. So first on my list is acting or singing, which really encompasses social interaction of all kinds. Uh, it's exactly what it says on the tin. This is about acting or singing or storytelling, possibly negotiation, any element where you have to say something in order for the game to progress. Action points. You spend action points to carry out actions. Area control. Here the board is usually split up into various regions. Part of the game will see a player trying to occupy and own them. Auction. This game has an auction or bidding element in it. Betting. I've taken this at face value. Basically you're wagering or betting on the in the traditional sense. Connections. Also known as route building, here you're trying to link regions of the board up, usually with your own playing pieces. Dexterity. Dexterity games usually involve your physical dexterity to determine an outcome. I couldn't find a, a similar category on Board Game Geek, so this is something I've added externally. Drafting. Here, players distribute cards or other game elements in an ordered selection process. Hand management. Hand management is where you have a maximum hand size or simply have to track and organize your cards hidden movement. Here I've said that one or more players will move pieces without revealing where to the others. Marketplace. Market is slightly different from an auction. Here the game will have some element of buying items for a set price. Memory. This game relies on your ability to remember and recall information. Pattern. Pattern refers to pattern recognition. This game relies on you seeing or finding patterns. Player elimination. This is a form of direct confrontation in my world. The game relies on you forcing other players out of the game during play. Player judgment. This game relies on players judging the choices or actions of others. Push your luck. This is the traditional double or quit. You keep going for additional benefits, but you could lose everything you've won so far. Resource management. Okay, you've got a finite amount of resource and you have to use that during the game. This could go both up or down as the game progresses. 
set collection. Here the game relies on collecting sets of things, usually cards. Simultaneous play. Players conduct either an action or their entire turn at the same time. Tile placement. This usually refers to the fact that play, the playing area is created as part of the game, with players laying board pieces or tiles down. Trading. Trading is similar to auction and marketplace, but basically allows players to trade items with each other without necessarily using currency. Traitor. This is usually associated with team or co-op games, where one player or more are trying to do something other than the common goal. Variable player powers. Each player has a different capability. Voting. Players will vote on the outcome of certain elements of the game. And finally, worker placement. Players use their pieces to carry out specific tasks. Okay. I've now got everything I think I need. What I need to do now is go through and put them in some kind of sequence or order and categorize them, refine them as I said. So working with the list on the right, uh, this is what I came up with. Starting with difficulty. Um, remember difficulty was about the complexity of the rules and how easy they were to understand. I wanted to have three ratings here. If I thought I could explain the rules in under a minute, I would call that easy. If I thought it would take uh, under three minutes, that would be an average for complexity and difficulty. And if I took more than three minutes explaining rules, then I would regard that as a hard to understand or hard to play game. For age appropriateness, I decided to have three icons of game. Uh, this time one for kid, one for family, uh, and one for adult. Um, I decided to rename age appropriateness to the word audience, which seemed a little bit more catchy and useful. The type of game was also going to be represented with three icons, one for bo a board game, one for a card game, and one for dice game. Again, this was supposed to show what the game was predominantly going to be about. For player interaction, I was going to use three icons. One for indirect confrontation, one for direct confrontation, and one for cooperative play. When I came to looking at skill and luck, I realised that actually they probably sat opposite ends of the scale. The more skill there was in the game, the less luck there would be, and vice versa. The theme, I'm going to stick with the description on the back of the box. And for duration, I'm going to use exactly what exists today. But the time will be based on the ideal number of players playing the game. And that leads me on to the number of players icon, which remains the same as well, albeit with an emphasis on the ideal number of players. Team play versus single play, pretty self-explanatory. One icon to represent the team, and one icon to represent single play. And finally for mechanics, uh, for each different mechanic, or each different game mechanic, I would use a different icon. Obviously, the more mechanics that made up the game, the more icons I would have. Okay, so I've refined the idea, I know what I'm going to select, now I need to just test it. So this is my attempt at trying to test the idea using icons I found on the web. In my example, this game is okay to be played by families. There's no adult themes and it's not aimed towards kids. Three to six people can play, but it's best played by five people. And if you play it with five people, it'll take about 120 minutes or two hours to play. There may be other elements, but this game is very much a board game, but it has got quite complex rules. In terms of skill versus luck, this game requires quite a lot of skill and perhaps strategy to play. It's not a 100% skill, so there is some luck involved. Thankfully, it's a cooperative game and we play as a team. But, as the last mechanic icon shows, there is a traitor element, so perhaps I can't trust everyone I play with. If I think about it, this game could perhaps be representative of Battlestar Galactica. Maybe. But I would probably have to add a few more mechanic icons. Well folks, that's the video. How did I do? I think I did okay. I took three simple icons and expanded them to include more relevant and helpful details. I think anyway.
What about you? Do you think you would have done things differently? Would you have included extra things or taken a few things out? Have I misunderstood what really should be on the back of a box? Let me know your thoughts. Put them on the comments if you can. And if you enjoyed this or any of the videos I've made so far, give me a thumbs up and perhaps subscribe. Until next time, guys, take care.